Ready? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure most of you or some of you might already know us from previous vlogs but if you don't already we just want to quickly introduce yourself. I'm Kathy and this is I'm Ruben and we're the best of friends. <laughs> we are the best of friends. Welcome to the Saywell family. We've officially been living in the Philippines for a year now. 12 months has flown by. Flown by but also feels like it's been long. Does. When you look back at all the experiences and the events of the last 12 months, it does feel like it's been, we, we've packed it in and we've come back. Some people told us before we came to the mission field that the first year is all about survival and we've survived, but I think we've done more than that. I think we've achieved, by God's grace, a lot and uh, it's been up and down but the Lord has been good and you know I think after the events of yesterday at the launch day yeah. I think that really solidified for us that we're where God wants us to be and I think God has really confirmed that we've come to the right place at the right time. I'm feeling encouraged yes. in spite of the difficulty. For those who don't know, the reason why we're in the Philippines is to church plant and you know we've been sent as missionaries from the UK to do church plant here. It's been a long time coming, right? We always wanted to live in the Philippines to do mission work, but we have our different stories. I've always wanted to go to the Philippines ever since I was a little girl. That's where the love started because my mom's Filipina and you know I love the people, love my family here. I wanted to know the language so I could communicate with them better and I just wanted to live here but my mom was like you need to fill up Philippine? You need to finish your education first so that's what I did and then I met Ruben in Aberystwyth. I mean it's, it's amazing when you look back at God's providence in not only, only how he brought us together mm -hmm. but how the Philippines connected everything. As children we used to raise money for an organization called Christian Compassion Ministries. When I turned 18, just before I went to university, I took six months out. I actually took a, I took a year out, took a gap year. Yeah. I did six months in McDonald's, which was not so glamorous. And then six months here in the Philippines, working in Cubao in Manila. Felt a call to the ministry for the very first time. Preached my first sermon, which is uh, better forgotten. That's where, the love for not just the country but the desire for ministry in this country began 2013 10 years ago and then later that year providentially went to Aberystwyth University this year marks our 10 years of knowing each other so that's also special our first conversation is about the Philippines I don't want to explain the whole love story otherwise we'll be here all night so and we'll you can see it in the previous vlog okay the boys we want to introduce our boys too, obviously. I'm now numbered three boys, gorgeous boys, pero makulit din. We first have Benji, he's our Benjamin, um, he's our eldest, he's six years old. He was born in Aberystwyth on our, well, just after I graduated actually. And I fell pregnant with him three months after we got married, so it was kind of a surprise and a blessing and a gift from the Lord. Go off to university. Uh, we moved to London uh, for me to train for the ministry at London Seminary and while we were there Michael was born, a London boy. And sometime later. We got our Covid baby Judah and he came during lockdown but also during a very hard time. I know it was a hard time for many people but also for us we lost his job, we had to move to Folkestone where we grew up, and we moved his yeah. family there. So we just needed that support from family. We decided when we found out we were going to the Philippines that we were going to stay in Ruben's parents' house. Wait, Vienna. Okay, um, mm -hmm. Vienna. Oh, I see, it's a Tagalog word. Oh. I thought you were abbreviating. Oh, no. B-N-N. -N. No. Oh, sorry. Sorry, B -N -N. okay. 
He learned a new word today. And then we are here a year ago. We actually tried to do this video a few days ago, which failed. So we can show you guys a few clips. Hi. So it's coming up to one year here in the Philippines. Just wanted to do a summary. Yes. <laughs> a summary. <laughs> summary of our year. It's quite a summary, I guess. <laughs> so if those of you who don't know our story, this time last year, we were pretty much preparing to come. Really uncomfortable. We were literally preparing okay. to... Start again. Last year, we were literally preparing to come to the Philippines. Um, I just saw a memory on your phone this morning. <laughs> I saw a memory on your phone this morning. Um, you know, when we had that leaving party in the church, in Grace Chapel. So many memories came back of like how quick that week was right we mm. didn't expect i mean i didn't expect i feel like i didn't have proper closure mm. did you no i don't i don't i didn't i didn't have that, that, that closure. <laughs> but, uh, now we want to just explain how our year's been here in the philippines oh. mm -hmm. how did it feel to first set foot in the philippines as a family of five i already feel like crying I don't know, it was very um, emotional because we were looking forward to this day and then when we got to the airport in the UK to come to the Philippines, it was such a heavy feeling on me. I didn't expect to feel that way because I felt like so much responsibility taking my three little boys across the world. I found it very tough, but I was super excited to finally show them the Philippines and the culture for them to I wanted to see what they were like when they first saw the first Buddha gate, which we've been talking about mm -hmm. to them. And I saw the Buddha gate! He's hiding in the car! Yeah, when we arrived in the airport, what time was it? Do you remember? It was like late at night. So we were really tired already, especially we were because we hardly got sleep. Traveling with little ones is not easy. It was very late. We were waiting for my Tita and Tito. And then I was just looking around like, is this safe? Because yeah, yeah. we were feeling before we even came to the Philippines, we want the like obviously our boys to be safe. So the boys have grown up in a family where the Philippines has been spoken about mm. in such positive terms. And so I think it was a bit of a shock to the system when they realized it wasn't Disneyland. I think we were pretty sure that this is where God had led us, um, both through an internal calling but also for the external confirmation of so many others. We were convinced of that but, but wanting to give the boys an amazing childhood. The thing I found tough was taking Benji out of school because he had a really good school in the UK and um, we didn't really know what we were going to do with the boys schooling. Ru's mom, mommy Becky, <laughs> um, she helped a lot with teaching me um, what I could do with homeschooling so I really wanted to try the homeschooling and we did do the homeschooling when we got here. It's not that they're not having a good childhood here. We, we, in so many ways, their childhood is so much more, I don't know, how would you say it? Adventurous. Yeah, more adventurous than we ever had. They get to live here and experience like, even because we live in the province, like the simple life. Mm. And it's just, it, I think it's taught them a lot. Yeah. Like we always say they're actually so blessed to yeah. be growing up here. But when it comes to this YouTube channel, I think it's probably become quite obvious that this is very much Kathy's project. Kathy is the one who puts the videos together, edits them, and uh, so this is the brains behind the operation on this channel. Yeah. I make I make appearances sometimes reluctantly, <laughs> uh, every so often. Yeah. But I think I think what we've always tried to do is to keep the YouTube channel as more of a a, a record of family life mm -hmm. rather than a report of. The mission activity. The original design of this channel was really just a document, a diary, video diary for the kids yeah. to look back on in years to come. And we also, before we came here, um, got told maybe you should, guys should start vlogging so that we can, you know, keep up to date. Mm -hmm. A very quick overview of how the Bible studies started. The first Bible study uh, we ever had, I think, was about two, three months after we'd arrived. And we got given an invitation by a member of the church 
in Cavalca, who lived in Bulacan, lives in Santa Maria, and uh, she invited us to come and hold a house Bible study group for her family. And a few days later, we had our second Bible study in a new location with a, a guy that we'd really just met on the street through Kathy's cousin. Uh, he's a coffee vendor and uh, he had a little stall uh, by the road in Balasing. He's now a good leader. Yeah, we love these guys. Uh, they come along regularly to our uh, church plant and have been a real blessing. So that, those were the two Bible studies that continued until really until January. So by the time of January, then we decided to collapse the Bible study groups into one main gathering here on a Sunday evening. Uh, and from that, things have really been very blessed. And now we have a weekly gathering here at the home in the garden. So we had our launch event on Sunday. So April the 9th, 62 people came along and I preached on the theme of resurrection, seeing as it was Easter Sunday. And uh, Kathy did a, a, a Sunday school. Easter Sunday, Sunday school. Yeah, to, to see God doing something here that we've been praying for for the past 10 years. So we are very excited about the future of Grace Plant Santa Maria. So what would you say We've talked about some of the blessings, and there have been many of them. What would you say have been the biggest challenges? What I found hard is, firstly, living here in the province has been a blessing. Like, it's simple life, and I love that. But at the same time, I don't feel like I can just go out of the house without Ruben, and I kind of feel sometimes trapped. And it's affected me sometimes mentally, and I want to give my boys, you know, bit more freedom in the day to do mm. to take them out to places like back in the UK we used to take them to the playground but when we go to Manila we do that another thing is just I guess just dealing with like my citizenship I have just this whole year I've been trying to get my dual citizenship and also just standing out I don't like 100 always standing out how about you Ruth? yeah I think a lot of what you just said I think also, yeah, it's, it's again, it ties in with the fact that we are foreigners and we're reminded every day. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we've always made it our objective since we first came here that we will become I was about to say as, that. Yeah, as Filipino as possible yeah. in the way that we do life here. Yeah. Filipino food, speaking Tagalog at every opportunity we have. I think driving around in a tricycle has helped us to achieve that goal a little bit. So fun. As far as the boys, you know, like as we said in the beginning, when we first got here, we were worried about, you know, not giving them a good um, childhood and education. But I think they've adapted so well. I'm so, yeah. so proud of them. We, we said before we came to the Philippines, we either come when the kids have grown up, yes, or we or come when they're small. Like now. And I think for kids, so long as they've got mum and dad, you can put them anywhere in the world and they feel at home. And so the kids have just, they've just taken it all in their stride. Language, food, climate, culture. I just everything. love seeing like a um, tricycle on the front of Ruben. Just, he's just so like cool, you know? Like, yeah, he's cool. We would have never done that. So uh, boys, if you're watching this in 10 years time. Oh my gosh, we're going to cry right <laughs> You've done amazing, and we love you. Yeah, we love you. You're <laughs> like emotional now. They're gonna have so much fun memories to look back on. Yeah, it's just been a journey this whole year, and it's making me emotional. But yeah. We don't know where we'll be this time next year. Sometimes we feel homesick, um, but that's natural. Moving to another country, yeah. and you know, I just I'm thankful for Will because he's been my rock and helped me through all of this.
right here. Go. <laughs> he just fell off again. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Say, my name Judah. Judah. Do you love the Philippines? What's your favorite thing about the Philippines? Me! Having a um, burger um, num, num, num. Burger from where? From Jollibee. Jollibee Burger. Okay, and what's your favorite fruit in the Philippines? My favorite fruit is lollipop. No, fruit. <laughs> uh, banana. Banana. Uh, anything else you love about the Philippines? Watching Spider-Man. Watching Spider-Man. What's your favorite Filipino word? Um, my favorite Filipino word is Butike. Butike. Hey guys, my name's Benji and I'm six years old and my favorite thing to eat is 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 Balu. And and my favorite ice cream is Uba and ice cream and my favorite fruit is strawberry. And my and my favorite movie is is banana smoothie and my favorite um, animal animal is lion. What about Philippine animal? Actually not no, actually not lion, actually dragon. Can you say some things in Tagalog? A few things you know. And um, my um um and my favorite Tagalog word is bilisna. That means faster. Where's the camera? <laughs>